Lettering is so easy in Hatch. Lettering can be added to other designs, or it may be the entire design. For example, you may want to create a label or a dedication for a project. Let's make a quick label for a quilt. In a new design window, I'll click the lettering tool, and I'll type in my text. So there's my text. You can add multiple lines, you can add single lines. If I go to the Objects tab of the Sequence Docker, we can see that this is one object. The default font is Block 2, and the default size is 10. I can pick a different font, but before I do that, I need to think about how I'm going to use this. Is this going to be a big block on the front of a quilt? Is this going to be maybe in the corner of a afghan? Is it going to be on a baby bib? Is it going to be a small label on the back of the quilt? All of those are going to be decisions I need to think about so that I can determine what size font I want and what kind of font I want. Now I like to put labels on the backs of my quilts and I like to use a run stitch font. So I'll click the font menu. We want to stick with a font that has a little red zigzag. These are pre-made embroidery fonts. I'm going to press R on the keyboard. And that will take me down here to the R's. And I want to run stitch. And I think I like run liberty. I'll just press enter. There is my label. These are 10 millimeters tall. Now, if you're not used to working in millimeters, 12 millimeters is about a half an inch. So I'm going to make this a little smaller, and we can see what size this font recommends, 5 to 12 millimeters. So I might make that, I don't know, 7 millimeters. And there we go. We have a nice small font. It'll look nice on the back of my quilt. Now let's look at another one. You'll see this design in the lesson on motif stamps. Let's see how to recreate it. Now you don't actually have to type in your text. You can actually copy and paste it. So here I have this little recipe. It's already in a text file. And I'll just copy and paste these different sections in here. Now I could copy and paste this all at once. This could be all one object. But the longer your text block is, the more processing time and resources it can take to recalculate if you have to edit anything. So I'm going to break this up into three blocks. I'll have the title, well, I'll have the ingredients, and then I'll have the instructions. So I'll just move that off the edge of the screen there, create a new design, Control N, and I'll paste in the title. And we'll move that up a bit. Then I'll go back and I'll copy the ingredients, paste, click in my window to deselect that, and I'll go back and I'll copy the instructions. I'm just right clicking and I'll paste. Now that's pretty long text, so I'm going to break that up. I'll put a carriage return here on backspace, and I'll do that again right here. I'll zoom out a bit. I'll leave the title this color. I want to change these to sort of a dark brown. And these are the default size and the default style, block two. I want to make those smaller, so I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to press S to go down to the small text. And I'll do small block. And I'm going to set the size to, let's try five. I see this is a really small, four to six millimeters. Let's just go with six. I'm going to change this font to Algerian. Now notice when I change it to Algerian, now we have all caps. It's because this font is just capital letters only. I can do some fun stuff with this. I'll put lettering art on that and arc that over like that. There are a lot of things you can do with lettering. We have lettering art. We can change the baselines. We can change the alignment. I kind of like it centered. And you'll learn all about these in other lessons in the Academy. Now, if we go back to this one, 
This one has some extra embellishments. These are from the included motifs, and you'll learn how to use those in the motif stamp lesson.